Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 389. We've got another installment of our question and answer series. I'm going to answer some questions that you all wrote in. Who's answering these questions? I am. My name is Jeremy. I am the founder here at Whistlekick. I'm your host on this show and the martial arts. Well, I love martial arts. So that's what you get. You get me twice a week talking to somebody. On Thursdays, sometimes you get me talking to somebody, but quite often it's just me rambling on. Maybe I'm answering some questions or talking about a specific topic. And the goal here is to make you think, to make you consider how martial arts is more than just the time you spend within a certain four walls doing certain movements. The whole idea is to make you a better person. And hopefully, in some small way, the show and the things that we do at Whistlekick help you with that. What are the things that we do? Well, you can find them all at whistlekick.com. We link out to all the different projects that we're affiliated with or running. Everything from marshalljournal.com, where we have wonderful original contributions from martial artists, all for free. It's a great content website. Wonderful things to read. Articles going up every day. So if you haven't checked that out in a while, do so, please. And at whistlekick.com, you can save 15% if you choose to buy one of our uniforms or protective equipment, use the code PODCAST15. And if you don't want to buy from us directly, well, buy from Amazon. All of our stuff is available with free Prime shipping. So check that out. Of course, show notes with transcripts and all that jazz are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And you should check that out if you haven't done that in a while yourself, too, also. (laughs) I'm rambling, so let's, let's get to it. I love answering questions. So a few, a couple months ago, it might be, uh, at the point that I put this out, I asked for questions for people for a Q&A episode. And we got a bunch of stuff back. Now, I've answered some of those questions on First Cup. And for those of you that forgot or don't know, First Cup is the morning show that we do, weekday morning, 6.30 a.m. on, 6.30 a.m. Eastern. There we go. Uh, YouTube, I probably just rambled that in a really terrible way. Let's try again. Every weekday morning, 6.30 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. You get to watch me wake up and drink a cup of coffee and answer questions and talk about life and martial arts. And the show is actually growing. It's kind of kind of interesting. Of course, you can check that out as a podcast if you want to. But I have a bunch of questions left here that I'm going to go through and I'm going to answer. I'll try to be fast because there are quite a few questions. And I love questions. So don't be afraid to write them in. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. And in another month or two, we'll do another Facebook Live where I get you to solicit, where I solicit. There we go. Questions. Man, my words are not happening today. Hope they get better. Let's do this. What motivations draw you to train in different schools and styles rather than staying with your original style? Well, logistically, I moved away. I started training when I was very young. I was a kid growing up in Maine, and I left Maine to go to college kind of had to leave. The instructors sold the school. So if nothing else, it would have been at least a little different because there were different people running it. I trained in a few things while I was in college, moved to Vermont. So of course, then I had to change again, started my own school, closed that, started training in Taekwondo, found some other people like Sensei Earl Smith, who's been on the show and trained with him. And then Because life tends to go in full circles. My original instructors reached out to me last year. I'm recording this in 2019. So mid-2018, they reached out and said, Hey, you want to train? (laughs) So now I get the opportunity to hang out with those folks again. Even though it's been over... It had been 20 years since I trained with them, which was just so much fun. Why do I like training in different schools, though? Let's ask that question. Because I think being a diverse martial artist is being a better martial artist. The more stuff you do, the more different ways you do things, the more you tend to hone in on what works, what works for you, what works with your own philosophies. And if you're only ever exposed to one thing, you don't know whether that thing is best for you or not best for you. It's like food. You can eat an amazing meal all the time. And even if you don't get bored with it, variety can help you enhance that meal, to help put that meal into context and say, hey, this is a really good meal. Or 
you know what? I've been eating chicken all this time. I really prefer fish. How long have you studied martial arts and what kind? I started when I was four. I'm turning 40 in a couple months. So at this point, it's 35 years. Uh, a few styles of karate, taekwondo, kempo, some jujitsu. Uh, what else we got in there? Kickboxing, uh, some capoeira. Uh, and I've done very, very small amounts, dabbled in. I don't even know that I can say I've really trained in, but have an appreciation for and would like to do more judo, uh, sword work, whether that's kendo or Ido or anything like that, and judo. I love, I love to train. If, if you've been listening to the show, you know I love to train. And if I had my way, I would set up uh, more of like a, a university style environment and people would come for, you know, several weeks to several months at a time and we would run class structure, you know, for specific things. And just that would be cool. I would love to do that. What's good for hand speed? The best thing that I know of to work on speed, whether it's hands or feet or anything, is learning how to relax and that learning how to initiate motion without creating too much tension in the rest of the body. Here's an example. People that are very fast with their hands tend to be very relaxed. And it doesn't matter so much how fast the motion itself is if there's a significant delay between the desire to move and the initiation of that motion. To say it in another way, if you've ever done a drill in your training where someone is randomly calling out when to do something and you tense up and you're, you're waiting for it, you're slow. But if you can relax and just react to whatever's happening without anticipation, you can be a heck of a lot faster. So practicing that, that comfort in reaction is a huge part of speed. Do I work with special needs children? I have. It's not something I have a lot of experience with. It's something that I've watched some people have amazing success with. And as a population, it's a group that I think benefits a lot from martial arts more from what I hear from others, because again, I don't have a lot of experience with it. There's something kind of special about martial arts in that it connects a lot of the different ways that people learn, physical, audible, visual. And so for people who have trouble learning or for people who have trouble focusing, martial arts can be pretty special. I do think that if a school wants to start a program specifically targeted to special needs in, in whatever way you define that, I think there are a lot of great resources out there and don't, don't be afraid to ask for help. Especially, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say what I would do. If I had a school again that I was going to create a special needs program, I would want to touch base with and get some, some expertise from people who are teaching martial arts to special needs folks, as well as people who just work with special needs students. Because there's a lot there that I don't know, and I'd rather not figure it out on the fly because I don't want to set anybody up for failure. Do I still practice forms? Absolutely. All the time. I won't say every day. Definitely weekly. Sometimes in my head. I love forms. I consider forms to be the pinnacle of martial arts, the, the crown jewel, the thing that has the most value, ultimately. And if you check it out, it's funny that, that this is in this list of questions. I hadn't looked at this in, in a couple of weeks. On today's episode of First Cup, this is April 10th, 2019, I'm recording this. I spent a good seven or eight minutes talking about why I feel that way about forms. So you can check that out. What's my favorite form? That's a good question. It depends. It depends on how I'm feeling the day, right? 
So the form that I spent the most time in competition with is Kusan Ku, and it's the Ishinru version. I did make you know, some small changes. Uh, if you don't know, Ishinru tends to be a pretty um, naturally stanced form, and that doesn't do well in competition. So I changed the stances a little bit, but I've also spent a lot of time with Empy. Um, and I'm honestly not sure where that version of Empy comes from. Because uh, I grew up in a, a little bit of a mixed environment. I had two different instructors who had two different instructors themselves. Actually, one of them had more than one. And so our collection of forms was a bit varied. But I'll be honest, I have a greater appreciation for Pinyon Shodan, or sometimes called Heian Shodan, than I ever did as a child. Because it's so simple, it allows you to work on a lot of really complex, difficult concepts, like generating power through the hips and staying grounded. The simpler the form, the more you can dig deep into the fundamentals and work on those things. How long have I been training? As I said, 35 years. And it doesn't feel like it's been that long because in my head, I'm still 25. So how is that possible? What's my favorite combination or technique? Hands down, favorite technique has always been a sidekick. Lead leg sidekick from a fighting stance, turn sideways, and lo and behold, who do I get to train with? Superfoot Wallace. Well, guess what? He didn't have to convince me. That's, a, that's always been my bread and butter, and come to find out that was his bread and butter too, so that's pretty cool. If I have a favorite combination, definitely some form of multiple kick, two kick combo before my foot comes down. For those of you that don't know me, I'm small. I'm 5'7". But I have good hip flexibility, so I'm able to kick fairly high. So my feet have always been my tool in sparring. And that's allowed me to stay kind of outside most people's punching range anyway, which is where I feel comfortable. So to throw one kick and then to throw a second kick as I kind of back out, that became a staple of mine through you know, all the different varieties of sparring I've done over the years. And then the last question, which sets us up beautifully for next time, what sort of questions are you looking for? I'm looking for questions that allow me to talk about my experiences, about who I am as a martial artist. Let's be honest. I don't mind talking about myself. It's not my favorite subject. But I've been training for a while. I've done a bunch of stuff. And it doesn't mean that what I've done or what I feel is better than anything else. I'm certainly not that arrogant. But here we are four years into the show, and many of you find what I say and the th experiences that I've had to be interesting. And I don't mind indulging that. I don't mind talking about my experiences. But rather than just ramble on, which does feel a little arrogant, I'd rather answer the questions that you all have for me about my time, whether it's a specific experience or how I would handle a situation. I've actually done quite a few phone consultations with people about how they would handle certain situations in their school or with their instructor, and I'm happy to do that. So if someone has a problem, a challenge that they're facing, I don't mind speaking to that as well. If you want to ask a question, a couple places you can do that. So you could answer in the comments under this episode, episode 389 at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, or you can email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Now, if you do reach out with a problem, some kind of personal challenge you're having, I'm not going to put you on blast. I'm not going to share your name out with everyone unless you want me to. And if I'm unsure, I won't do it. I won't just name names. I have a list of names next to every question that was asked. I didn't name those names because I didn't ask people if they wanted me to mention their name. And that's fine. Those of you that asked the questions, you know if it was your question. And to all of you who did ask questions, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And I appreciate you, the listener. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for supporting the show, even if it's only by listening and open your earballs to my words. As I've said many times, as I'll say again, if it wasn't for you, I would just be a crazy guy talking to himself in a microphone. Head on over to whistlekick.com for all the stuff that we're doing, like the discounts, 
podcast 15, 15% off. Sign up for the newsletter. Sometimes we do some specials on specific products, so you can check that out. And whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is where you get the transcript and other episodes. None of our episodes are behind a paywall. We never take them down. They're all there. 388 other episodes for you to check out, enjoy, share, learn from, or even revisit. We're on social media. It's at Whistlekick, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Those are the main ones. And if you want to ask a question, all right, I told you about that. If you want to help us out without making a purchase, give us a share or give us a review somewhere. Just, you know, show us some love. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for being here. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to do what I do. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.